Coming up at Climbing Chronicles, we are heading to the lead climbing World Cup in the United States. Will the Austrian Jakob Schubert be able to gain his sixth victory in a row? We are traveling with Nale Hukataival around the world, searching for the best boulder spots. And we go free soloing in 20 meters above the water. It's called deep water soloing. One of the best rock climbers in the world, Nale Hukataival, the 25-year-old Finn, doesn't compete in contests for years now. He prefers other stuff. Now I've never experienced a desert before here, so it's definitely harsh. <laughs> It's a lot different compared to where I'm from, that's for sure. It's like very little water anywhere. It's like dry. It's hot as hell out here. Nale wants to find the most challenging boulder spots, no matter where and how. At the most difficult problems, he can show the full range of his skills. Nale is definitely one of the most talented individuals I've ever seen. He's got a really, really good feel for the rock and a very solid head. And he's just one of those guys who just makes everything look so easy and so effortless. But you can tell that he's putting everything on, he has. Come on, come on. He's giving 100% effort and every skill and every piece of ability that he has as a climber. He's giving it to the rock every try that he gives. And Nali is this kid from Helsinki who's come from basically a place with no scene. It's probably not the best place to be a rock climber. Like, I mean, I'm the only one pretty much climbing this hard in Scandinavia and sometimes it's just a bit frustrating climbing like people who don't climb even close to your, your like level. I would say it's good, like there's a lot of gyms and Training possibilities are pretty good. Boulder, Colorado, USA. The first World Cup in lead climbing in the United States for 22 years. The challenge for the athletes? Climbing an unknown route. Who climbs highest wins? The last touched hold counts. This year's man to beat, the Austrian Jakob Schubert. He already won five world events in a row. Now he starts his semi-final route. Winning could get difficult today. I'm not used to this uh, new style of route in the competition. They are much shorter, only 35 holes. Usually we have up to 50 holes. The route is shorter, but really difficult with no breaks to relax. The short but challenging routes could become a problem for many of the athletes. Jakob climbs up to hold number 34. Is this enough to get into the finals? Nale Hukateval in Fontainebleau, France, the place where bouldering was first established over 100 years ago. It's really nice to be climbing here. Like, it's the birthplace of bouldering and They've been doing it for, here for a long time, and there's a lot of classics. Like even in these days, with like good climbing shoes and all the gear, they're still really hard. Like impossible for me. <laughs> like it would take so much effort to do them. For example, the island. The island. That's a really nice problem. One of the best in Fontainebleau for sure. This overhanging problem with this perfect slow person. A lot of compression, just perfect style. There's not a single annoying hold. All of them are just perfect. It's, it's really difficult. I think it's the hardest problem I've climbed. It took four days until Nale finished the island. Back in Boulder, Colorado at the World Cup in lead climbing. Front runner Jakob Schubert made it to only hold 34 in the semifinals. Now it's Sean McCall's turn. The Canadian climber is used to short, hard ropes. 
and he gets up to hold 35. He's also one of the favorites, Sachi Ama. The Japanese is number four in the world, and he's doing well in the short, challenging routes. He's already won both qualification runs. And he also wins the semifinals. Front runner Jakob Schubert finishes only fourth position. New, harder routes are being built for the finals. The competition is really strong today. I'll have to fight in the finals for sure. Jakob Schubert will be fighting for sure. If he wins, it will be his sixth World Cup victory in a row. Without rope and any safeguard, this spectacular climbing discipline is called deep water soloing or psychoblock. The requirements? Overhanging walls and water, which is deep enough to fall into. Once you lose the fear, you can climb totally free, like perfect movements and totally freedom. Who falls? Just falls into water. It's less painful if there are waves, but harder to get to the start of the route. The climbing discipline is originated in the 90s in Mallorca, where the climbers have perfect conditions. When you do sequel block, you need more than fitness. You also need mental strength. The crux is often 20 meters above the water, and you definitely have to climb it, otherwise you'll fall down. Tallado Canyon in Brazil, the perfect spot for deep water soloing. Felipe Camargo, an excellent sports climber, fights with the biggest problem in deep water soloing, the mental block. High routes like this without rope. The psychological factor forces Felipe to pull back. You get nervous, because you were already way up high. I'm not used to falling into the water. You get up to a certain height and ask yourself, can I take the risk? You might get hurt by falling down. That's why in contests, not the best climber wins, but the one with nerves of steel. Like this guy, Lucas Marquez. He's climbing routes where no one else would climb. <laughs> Joe's Valley in Utah. Nale Hukataival is looking for new challenges. It's been really cool out here, I guess. So I just had a chance to climb on a lot of stuff. Climb a bunch of with 12s the 11s, the 10s even, like problems that I can do pretty quick and then try something a little harder. Don't have many areas in the world left where I can actually go out and just climb all day on like all these hard problems, so it's been really fun. The difficult routes are getting scarce for the Finn and traveling isn't his favorite hobby. I don't know, traveling's pretty rough. To be honest, it's like you're know, jet lagged all the time, eating weird food, like getting used to different cultures. It's just not that easy. I mean, sure, there's been moments where I feel like I just want to quit this whole thing and just live a normal life, but it lasts for so long. I'm pretty committed to this lifestyle. Just travel different places and just everything revolves around climbing pretty much. Back in Boulder, Colorado, the finals of the World Cup in lead climbing. Front runner Jakob Schubert is still climbing. In the semifinals, he only made it to fourth position.
Jakob goes up very high this time, up to hold 38. But there are still four athletes who climb afterwards. In case none of them get higher, Jakob wins his sixth World Cup in a row. The Canadian Sean McCall is on the route. He was better than Jakob in the semi-finals. This time, he only gets to hold 18. Sean the Japanese Sachi Ama is the last one to climb. He won every round so far. Will he climb higher than Jakob Schubert? He doesn't. He falls down at hold number 34. I can't describe it. It's amazing. Six times in a row on the podium. It's unbelievable. Every time I think, now it's over, but then I'm on the podium again. Next time on Climbing Chronicles, the pressure's on as Jakob Schubert competes at the World Cup in Valence, France, and tries for a seventh win to set a new world record. And we join adventurer and climbing legend Stefan Glovac on his expeditions around the world.